Virtual reality could end up helping people suffering from hoarding disorder by practicing decluttering. This is from a recent study from Stanford Medicine. Hoarding is a common and debilitating disorder, especially among older adults who can't seem to let go of some of their possessions swallowing up their homes. In fact, it affects an estimated two and a half percent of Americans. Joining me now is professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Stanford University, Dr. Carolyn Enriquez. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Can you tell us about this study and how virtual reality could help people suffering from hoarding disorder? Yeah, absolutely. So um, hoarding disorder is um, characterized by people having a really strong uh, attachment to items. They have difficulty letting go. It causes a lot of distress um, and the clutter in their home accumulates to the point where they can't use um, the, their living spaces. Yeah. They can't sleep in their bed. They can't cook in the kitchen. And one of the best treatments is cognitive behavioral therapy, which promotes skills to learn how to sort and part with possessions. And so virtual reality offers the opportunity for those individuals where we can't practice in their homes, either because uh, they um, have too much clutter and it's difficult for us to go inside or they have mobility issues. And it represents a stepping stone to be able to practice letting go of items in this uh, curated, personalized 3D space. Yeah, it's a fascinating way to approach the hoarding disorder. And I want to go back and talk a little bit about what hoarding disorder actually is and what makes yeah. it different than, say, somebody that needs to clean out their closet or maybe has a messy garage or has some old magazines lying around. Tell us kind of the difference between that and actual hoarding disorder. Absolutely. Hoarding disorder is characterized by extreme distress in letting go of the items, a really, really strong attachment. And um, the clutter impacts their ability to um, do things like grandmother can't have their grandkids over, it impacts their social functioning, impacts their work functioning. So it really, that's the point where it tips the scale from somebody who needs to just unclutter a few rooms in their home, that level of, of um, uh, dis disability and difficulty. As well, it's diff different from collecting where individuals with collectors are proud of their possessions. They keep them organized. They love to have people over. Individuals with hoarding disorder, what's marked is a level of um, embarrassment and shame. They don't like to have people over to their home. And there's a level of disorganization. So items from the living room will be in the garage and the garage and the living room. So why do people develop hoarding disorder? Is it a psychological condition? Is it responding to some sort of trauma or is it a wiring in someone's brain? Why do people suffer from this? Uh, the short answer is we don't know what causes okay. hoarding disorder and we really need more research. It was just 2013 where it became a distinct diagnostic entity in the manual that we use um, in, in psychiatry, the DSM-5. Um, so we're just at the tip of the iceberg. Even though these behaviors have been around for a long time, we really need people to research and, and study it further. You know, it's interesting when we talk about how many people suffer from hoarding disorder. I was surprised to learn 2% of the population suffers from this. Before you go, any advice for people who may be suffering from hoarding disorder? Because I can imagine there is a stigma attached to it. Advice for people seeking help with this? Absolutely. Well, first, I just want to say that there's hope out there. And um, we have new studies, new technology. We're trying to understand the brain basis of what causes this. And um, there are organizations out there like the International OCD Foundation, American um, Association for Psychiatry, a lot of different organizations that are poised and ready to offer help and support. And the first step is to get information and um, to take the first step into care. There is hope. Absolutely. There's always hope. All right, Dr. Carolyn Rodriguez with Stanford. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.